All right, so this is a video that I didn't think I was going to make. I was not expecting to talk about this person ever again. And you might be like, tell me, Sensitive, who are you talking about? Of course, I'm talking about the one, the only, Fuzz99. Now, if you've been around the channel for over a year, first of all, thank you. Second of all, you would know that we've made a few videos on them, a very interesting uh, TikToker. And I've been extremely critical of their content and what they promote, and I'm not the only guy i mean a year ago when this started blowing up everyone was talking about them and they weren't talking about them for being a big inspiration for the lgbtq community if anything they did more harm than good and if I'm not mistaken, someone sent me this video and it's called the truth. A hater got me fire. Now to whoever made that thumbnail, 10 out of 10, that might be one of the greatest thumbnails in existence. Now for a little context, in case you guys don't know, this was a big TikToker. I don't know if they're still making videos, but this was a TikToker and their whole personality was being gay. They did work at a school. They were around kids and this person was giving a lot of advice to young people about, you know, transitioning and stuff like that stuff that in my opinion, shouldn't be <laughs> told by a substitute teacher. But with that said, let's just get into it. This is a long one. So, you know, grab your snacks and let's just jump right into it. I was recently hate crimed for being queer. And as a result of me being hate crimed for being queer, it ultimately led to me being fired from my job as a high school substitute teacher. I hate making content like this. That whole moment of silence was straight out of a YouTube apology. <sighs> I'm sorry guys, I touched the 10 year old, <laughs> but uh, I was depressed, so does that make it okay? I mean, what is that fucking sigh like? Uh, guys, I don't like talking about this, let me make a 20 minute video about it. This has 100 likes, 900 comments, and 15,000 views. I mean, you could guess how bad the ratio is. Something that they continue to say is they were a victim of a hate crime, right? So we get the real definition because they say it constantly. A hate crime is typically one involving violence. So, you know, that's something that we really got to highlight here. It involves violence. That is the definition of a hate crime. I guess hate speech would be different. But let me make one thing clear. In this whole video, they never said they were physically assaulted. Now, if that was the case, you know, I'm not for that. I think that's corny. But you were not a victim of a hate crime. Like, you're stretching the definition of the word hard, okay? You didn't get punched because, you know, whatever you identify as. You didn't get punched, period. So I want you guys to pay attention to that because they mentioned it quite a few times. This part was so dramatic, dude. Come on. <laughs> I love making people laugh and smile and forget about all their troubles. I love helping people feel comfortable in their bodies and always preach that there's nothing ever wrong with being you and that you should always identify and do the things that make you happy and feel most like you. I love learning about my community and I love helping educate others about my community too. What happened to me wasn't fair to me or to my students that I helped make a better and safer environment for every single day. Right now in America, queer teachers are under attack and are constantly being targeted and kicked out of the classrooms for being who they are and for helping students feel welcomed for who they are. Now, here's the thing that I wanna point out because I know this is where people are gonna call me transphobic, homophobic, bigot, and all that fun and jolly stuff that I love hearing, right? Most people legitimately don't give a fuck what you are, okay? What amplifies all of this is Twitter and Instagram and TikTok. But when you step into the real world, you would be surprised by the amount of people who actually give a shit what you are or what you do, what you like, and what you don't, okay? Step outside, please, I beg you. It's not as bad as it seems, okay? Or as good as it seems. And you gotta stop acting so innocent like you didn't encourage certain stuff. We can go to the TikToks, right? You can go to my old videos and if you don't want to watch mine look it up okay she's been known or I don't, what are they <laughs> they don't even have their pronouns i don't know what they are okay they let's just go with they that seems fucking neutral because they're gonna come for my head all right <laughs> 
the thing is, right, people don't hate you because, I don't know, are you trans? Are you gay? Whatever you are. They don't care, okay? The reason why you were getting so much hate and so much backlash, it's not because you're gay or trans, okay? It's because you make that your whole personality. And on top of that, you're just annoying as balls, okay? You're so obnoxious and unlikable. And that's not because you have that happy, positive attitude. No, it's not that kind of attitude. It's the attitude of someone who's obnoxious and they clearly never got told you are annoying, okay? Sure, there's people that might hate you for being trans. You know, I'm not one of them. I literally don't give a fuck, okay? As long as you're not an annoying piece of shit, more power to you, go cray cray, right? But your job is to teach. Your job is not to advise young people to transition or give them tips or put stuff in their head, okay? You gotta know your role and know what to do. If you're a substitute teacher, that's great. And I've had a gay teachers in the past, especially at a university. No one gives a fuck, okay? Legitimately, no one cares, dude. Because they act normal, okay? They act chill. They don't make being gay or trans or whatever their whole personality. Because, believe it or not, they're more than that. You know, they're human beings. They're people just like us, right? But, you know, they have different, you know preferences and stuff no one is crucifying you for being trans or for being whatever part of the community you belong to the reason why you were getting so much hate and criticism is because of what you were informing the kids and what you were telling them and, and on top of that like i said just being an obnoxious person you are extremely unlikable and you're playing the victim guys i was a victim of a hate crime no you weren't <laughs> okay or did you get assaulted did you get punched i don't think so you didn't mention it in this video stop the cap stop acting so fucking innocent Innocent. guys i'm getting hate and i don't know why okay i hope that by telling my story i can make other queer teachers who have gone through similar experiences feel less alone and that i'm able to use this as an opportunity to say goodbye to my students that i didn't get the chance to say goodbye to because that opportunity was taken away from me by a hateful miserable person who had too much time on their hands okay Am I the only one who's getting kind of freaked out at the fact that she hasn't blinked in like a minute and a half? I'm getting kind of concerned here. I don't know what's going on. I'm a little spooked. Okay, guys, let's be honest here, right? If I was a dad and I saw that one of my kids, you know, substitute teachers was gay, would I pull them from that class? As long as you're teaching them and you're doing a good job, I don't give a fuck, you know, go crazy. But the second you make it personal and you go out of your way to lecture kids about transitioning and and you know all of that stuff that's when people have a problem you're not their parent right if their parent wants them to learn you know awesome if they don't that's awesome that's not your kid and that was a big issue you were getting involved with the kids personally telling them stuff that didn't need to come from your mouth you're there to teach math right stick to what you know and that's it whatever you believe keep it outside and leave it outside the classroom. But you made one mistake, just a little one, and that is getting personally involved with the students and giving advice and tips. So yeah, if I was a parent and I heard that, of course I would complain. Who wouldn't? And no, for the people in the back, I am not saying don't teach them X, Y, and C at school. I'm just saying it's not your job to do that. It's not your kids, <laughs> you know? Mind your own business, just teach what you have to teach and enjoy whatever you enjoy. I don't know, is that so hard to understand or comprehend? Or is that too much to ask for nowadays? I don't know. For us to start, we have to go back a whole year ago to when I was being targeted by hateful extremist groups and really blew up online. Particularly by that one cis lady who was accused of inciting bomb threats against schools, libraries, and hospitals and who also just got appointed to an advisor position on the Oklahoma Educational State Department's Library Committee, which is a whole nother mess that we're not gonna get into right now. Any podcast, YouTube video, TikTok, or any content mentioning my name during that time would get millions of views. I had hundreds of thousands of people harassing me online and some even went to more extreme lengths to harass me in real life now i'm all for trolling and fucking around and leaving funny 
comments like you're gay or you're cringe or you're corny or you're fat or you know oh well it's not like i'm encouraging it by the way but you know i get it i know how kids act okay i know how they are because i was once believe it or not a 14 year old online who said the craziest shit okay so i get it that's why i don't take it personal when someone leaves a crazy comment under my videos or my ig or twitter because i've been there i know what that's like and you know you're gonna regret it in the future or you're gonna think you know, that's the funniest thing ever. Like, that's why I don't really pay too much attention to it. And the thing is, and I've said this a lot of times, if you can't take the heat, get out. Unless you have some kind of hate fetish where you're getting off to the fact that th not, not, not thousands, millions of people are shitting on you. And once again, you did yourself no favors by being obnoxious and extremely unlikable, okay? If you were posting what you were posting without the exaggerated faces, without being obnoxious, without being loud... Without saying cringy shit like spooky, spooky haircut. Spooky, spooky haircut. Spooky, spooky haircut. Spooky, spooky haircut. <laughs> you yourself, <laughs> I'm sorry, but you did this to yourself. Okay, I don't know what else to say. You have no one to blame for your downfall but yourself. Now, do I agree with people being out there and personally harassing you IRL? Of course not. I always say and I believe in it. Online stuff should stay online. It should never come out into the real world, okay? So I don't condone doxing. I don't condone you finding out where they work and meeting them in person or stalking them. No, I am completely against that no matter who it is. You know, unless it's CDP, right? You know, I make excuses for certain people. But, you know, leaving a comment and calling you cringes as far as I'll go, I will never seek you and be like, I'm going to find you, girl or guy or whatever. You know, I'm not going to do that. And I think most people wouldn't. But I don't know. Like, they're playing the victim and it's really annoying. They're acting like they've never posted bad content or content to piss off people in their life. They knew what they were doing. They were forming hate, okay? Stop trying to act like an angel, cause you ain't. One of which ways was reporting me to school. In September of last year, I was called into HR's office for one, being reported by the haters, and two, apparently the freshmen were writing my username on whiteboards and the school wanted to make sure I wasn't self-promoting my brand, which, I wasn't. The freshmen had a very hard time adjusting to the fact I worked at that school and freaked out on the daily because I worked at school. I wonder why. I mean, you seem so positive and huggable and likable. I, I, I don't understand why anyone would ever have a problem with you. And like I said, no, it's not because you know they're queer or they're gay or you know they like what they like. They might have a penis, they might not. Maybe they do. Maybe they have three, right? I don't care. I just care about you doing your job. <laughs> Stop trying to label people as haters and, you know, transphobic and cis people. It's like, and then you wonder why no one wants to hang out with you. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, these are people that even if you try to sit with them and reason with them, there's no saving them. They're gone, brother. It's over. Sacabo. Like, you can't help these people because they're chronically online losers. And am I chronically online? I always say that I'm a chronically online YouTuber because I'm always seeking content, but I try to be offline as much as I can for this specific reason because I don't want to turn into a terminally online YouTuber who gets any amount of criticism and it's like, hater, transphobic, racist, you don't like me because I'm this. No, okay? I try to, uh, to stay grounded as much as I can. But, yeah, this person's lost. Like, I get it. Like, yeah, freshmen are horrible. They're, like, 15 years old. They, uh, you know, they're silly. They're goofy. High schoolers act like that towards anyone. Doesn't matter what you are. You know, it's fair game to them. This person is acting like you're the first substitute teacher to ever get pranked or to ever get, I don't know, bullied. That's been around forever. I've had substitute teachers before. No one likes them. And no, gender or sexuality has nothing to do with that. Have you ever thought that you just suck? You're just not good? Has that ever, you know, popped into your brain? And all the other kids at school hated the freshmen and would be like, you guys are stupid. Why are you freaking out? It is just mom. Chill out. Jeez, bro. Freaking freshmen. Yeah, no one has ever said that. Let's just be honest. <laughs> There's no way this person had fans. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, they're just capping. It was then during this meeting though, I explained that I was internet famous and that I make LGBTQ educational content on the internet and that I was targeted towards the end of summer and that our very own town's manager was aware I was being harassed as well as the local police department being informed and then later involved. At the end of the meeting, my manager said word for word, and I never forgot this. I don't care if you swear like a sailor or post whatever you want to post. It is your social media and you can do whatever you want to do with it. Hearing those words and knowing that the school supported me and was going to have my back through that mess motivated me to keep creating and to keep going and made me believe that the haters couldn't take my job away from me. I mean, once again, with the phrasing, with the word haters, these haters are coming after me. Now, I like to use the word hater, you know, kind of sarcastic because it's just so overplayed. Like I got haters, they're just hating on me, you know, the same way I use stuff like bangers. So I say new banger drops tomorrow. Like I'm obviously making fun of like the Jake Paul era when they would say bangers are here to stay, fire emoji, fire emoji, explosion sound effects, you know, all that good stuff. I use those things sarcastically. I just hate when people constantly use the word hate as a shield for valid criticism you know what you did you know what you were spreading and once again go back a year a year and a half look at everyone who talked about them and one of the big reasons why you're getting so much hate is number one being obnoxious i think that's the biggest thing I, I you know apart from you being gay or whatever i think the biggest thing is that even if you were straight and you were so or you are so fucking annoying and your expressions were annoying your videos were annoying you were extremely obnoxious like i haven't seen anyone as obnoxious as this person right here in forever okay i'm gonna be honest with you guys this is gonna be top 10 worst things to happen to the internet i truly do believe that even if you were straight you would have gotten so much hate and criticism because number one your videos suck let's just get that out of the way number two you're extremely loud and obnoxious no one likes loud people okay and then mixing that with your stupid facial expressions and your dumb reactions and on top of that you're teaching kids about this kind of stuff that it's not your place to teach you're bound to get some criticism dude like no, no shit on october 30th 2023 i received an email from my hr manager asking to sit down to talk about my social media posts i hadn't posted about working at school on tiktok in a couple of weeks and the only post i could think of was where i let the art club kids face paint my face to practice before a big football game and I thought for some reason HR wasn't gonna be happy. I let them face paint my face and were gonna yell at me, but that wasn't the case at all. Considering the comments on this video were so horrible. I mean, to be completely honest with you guys, I think it would be creepy if a straight white teacher asked their students who draw their face like just imagine a 55 year old having like a whole bunch of high schoolers younger high schoolers paint his face and being so close to him and let's say they're all girls you already know the pedophile allegations are going to be flying at 100 miles per hour the second he's around girls it should have not been done period it's weird i don't care if it was a you know straight woman or a straight male it would have been weird regardless of having what four or five six different kids so close to you painting your face like it's weird like i would never ever want to be that close to one of my teachers and be like so can i draw you here and then with this fucking morning breath for him to be like well not even the morning breath the fucking coffee breath oh my god fucking teachers but anyways i digress it's weird regardless i don't think they're a pedophile i definitely think they're around kids a bit too much uh, i'm talking about fuss it's warranted i think anyone else would have gotten a warning in my opinion i do believe this was the motivation for the hater to commit the crime that they did the morning of november 2nd before my meeting with hr i was notified by email by our substitute booking website that all of my jobs that i had booked out till march were taken away from me and i was released from working them immediately i got a gut sinking feeling in my stomach and realized something more serious was going on and i had no clue what it was when I walked into the meeting, my HR manager asked me if I knew why I was here. I said I had no idea, besides wanting to talk about my social media posts. They then pulled out a yellow folder and slid two screenshots of two old thirst traps across the table to me. And I was just like... 
Oh my god. Wow. Oh my god. I haven't seen these videos in forever. Oh my god. This is from within the first month of me making TikToks every day. Honestly, you should have never been uploaded. Just thinking about this person making thirst traps is making me want to puke and die. So I just want to, you know, very smoothly not talk about that but at the same time i kind of do because i don't know if this is a controversial opinion that's gonna get everyone here to unsubscribe but i gotta say it anyways i don't think teachers should have tiktoks am i being lynched right now am i gonna be crucified because you know not only for this reason but i don't know i just it's weird i don't know maybe because i'm older but it's just weird i can't imagine one of my teachers making thirst traps Okay, can you imagine that? It doesn't matter. Well, only if they're baddie, so. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> like, I'm not saying teachers shouldn't have social media because, you know, they should, right? But they should definitely do some background check. Just imagine if I try to be a teacher with the content that I put out. And it's not even hateful content or, you know, even controversial. At least not the recent ones. You know, I've changed for the best. But, like, I don't know. Would I hire me? Well, of course I would because, you know, you know not me. <laughs> Who wouldn't want me as a teacher? I don't know. It's kind of irresponsible, in my opinion, to hire someone who's a TikToker. And on top of that, a very hating and controversial one whose whole personality is, I'm queer and let me teach you how to be queer or trans or whatever, you know, not a lot of people rock with that. And it's like when you mess with someone's kids like this, it's game over. It's just a matter of time before you get fired. I don't know. It was super stupid. And if I were them and I would get a job as a substitute teacher and, you know, let's say my TikTok is popping or whatever, I would just delete all the weird ones, right? That's the normal thing to do. And have you guys noticed that so far they haven't taken accountability for their actions? They're just like, the haters, they're mean. It's everyone else but me. You know, she's acting like a saint. Like, brother, you're not an angel. It's not like you're getting called out and rightfully so. It's not like you got fired for being trans. If that was the case, you would have never been hired on the first place. It's because of your shitty content, okay? Get that into your big ass head. The rest of the meeting was spent scrolling through my TikTok and my HR manager being pleasantly surprised and pleased with my content, as well as showing them how much I post and how long it takes to even scroll back just to a year ago. Wow, I cannot believe you make such lovely videos and help people and make an income while you do it. Yeah, no one ever said that. Let's just be honest, they're lying. Yo, I can't believe you're saving lives out there sensitive with the bangers you're dropping on a daily. You're changing humanity. You're the goat for a reason. <laughs> it's the HR manager be sucking on that Lizzie. That's gotta be cap. Let's just be honest. No one is going to be that excited. No way. You're iconic. <laughs> yeah, this totally did not happen. I'm gonna take these notes and circle back with the superintendent and the principal, and it'll ultimately be up to them to decide what they wanna do with this decision. And until I hear from them, consider yourself suspended. Okay, awesome. Thank you for sitting down with me and getting my side of things instead of just firing me. I really appreciate it and I'm gonna go home and go take down those videos. Yeah, I would have just fired you for being annoying at that point. And I don't care if it's fire without a cause. You're corny. Being fired for being corny and annoying should honestly be valid. What if I'm the boss and I don't like someone for being corny and obnoxious? Fuck paying you. I'm firing you for being annoying. <laughs> Let's do that. Can someone in the US government actually make that thing possible? It should be valid. Like imagine hiring someone and you get this person and then you gotta come up with an excuse or you gotta figure out how to get them to quit or how to get them fired without paying them. If you vote for me guys, I'll make that a reality. However, knowing the decision was up to the superintendent who is a white cis older male and who I've never met and has no idea who I am or what I look like and the principal who is also a white cis male who gave me the vibes that they were not the biggest fan of me and never really knew how to interact with me because of who I am made me feel like the chances of me not getting fired were very low. A few days after the meeting, however, my art teachers all reached out to me and were like, Where have you been? Why is there another substitute summoned in the art classes right now? Where are you? Because I eat lunch with them every day, and I'm always the first sub offered to substitute the art classes because I make art and I know what I'm doing and I'm able to help the students with their art projects. And I just really love it and oh, I can't awesome. Okay. 
So, yeah, of course, you, you know, your art teacher friend is the one who's vouching for you. Surprising absolutely no one. And I love that she said this, right? The principal who doesn't know me or know anything about me. Isn't that, like, one of the best ways? Because they don't have a bias. They haven't seen you. They don't know what you are. You know, wouldn't that be a good thing? Or do you wish they knew who you were so you got a preference because you're trans? You know, you gotta, you gotta be consistent here. And then saying that the principal, you felt like they had weird vibes because of who you are like this is the thing this is exactly what i mean they make everything about them being queer and if you don't like them it must be because they're queer like there isn't a million other things and in, um, in a million different reasons why they shouldn't like you dude it should be pretty obvious that the reason why people don't like you is because you're annoying okay you know sure some of them might be because of your queerness or whatever but the majority doesn't like you because you're obnoxious okay and annoying and no one likes those type of people okay so stop trying to <laughs> to blame it on you know i'm gay so you know it's because of that no no like i said most people legitimately don't care as long as you do your job and you don't bring anything else up you should be good Okay, so in this whole video, they don't take accountability for their actions. It's just everyone's fault, but mine. You don't need to watch anything more, honestly. Long story short, she got fired and uh, I don't blame them. I would have fired her too. I would have been like, goodbye, bitch. Good luck. Keep making those TikToks. But uh, that's just me. I think this is a perfect example of someone feeling entitled and like the world owes them stuff just because they're gay. It's like, no, that's that's not how it works. You're just like everyone else here, right? That's the whole point for you to be accepted and everyone's equal, but you want different opportunities because of that. And I keep going back to the teacher stuff. Like it doesn't make sense. If they have no prior context of you or how you look or who you are or how you act, they, shouldn't that be a good thing? Because you're starting fresh. They don't have a bias towards you. Unlike the quote unquote principal who who already knows you and you yourself said that you know you don't really felt like you know they liked you for who you are i doubt it was because you're queer i think it has everything to do with your personality and the core of you which is being an obnoxious prick but with that said what do you guys think let me know subscribe like share notifications on give me your money open that wallet up thank you so much for watching and uh god i don't know how anyone's friends with this person i'd rather die and go to hell and fall for 24 years straight than to ever, ever sit at the same lunch table as this person right here. Anyways, I'm a bounce. Peace.